Here we will cover the basic setup for the X618 configuration. And now we will introduce the configuration tool. Double click or right click on the icon and select Run as the Administrator to open the configuration tool. The configuration software is shown with the title bar, menu bar, project explorer view, navigation buttons, and main page. The title bar contains three contents, projects, tools, and help. The project menu is used for functions like new, open, save as, recent projects, project properties, close, and exit. The tools menu provides some special operations such as browse recorded files in DCS, browse recorded files in the NPMS such as the call station, or export device list, upload project file from DCS to PC, virtual console, browse log in DCS 3000, browse log in NPMS, upgrade DCS NRI X NPMS firmware, and select language. The help menu of the X618 config software provides a software version, information, and help information for the operation of the software. For the software configuration, there are four navigation buttons, device, task, operation, and download. The device button is used to set basic function parameters of the devices. The setting items depend on the device type, such as the DCS3000 or the call station NPMS, but they mainly contain properties, time, supervision, and so on. The task button is used to set the broadcast task, which mainly includes playlist, task, and the task scheduler. The operation button is used to set various operation functions, such as the programmable keys, contact input, and scheduling. The download button is used to download the config to the DCS 3000. We will now create a new project. Click Project Menu. A pull-down menu will pop up and then we can select New to create a new project. After selecting New, a dialog box will display in the window. This is where we can correct a project name and select the directory. We can also set the name in the first group. Because the devices can be classified into different groups in a project, only devices in the same group can respond simultaneously when signals are detected through the dry contact inputs. The central option is used to set the selected group as a primary group of the system. Only a device from the central group can execute the broadcast operation to all the groups. However, the device from the local group can only operate on the device within the same group. Open is used to open an existing project. Save is used to save a project. In recent projects, you can find the projects that you configured recently. In project properties, we can set the basic information such as the project name, company, contact, and telephone can be displayed to help the users manage the files. If the NPMS is used in the system, the project name will be displayed on the NPMS standby screen. The net package sizes of the DCS3000 and the NPMS are 2 kilobyte and 4 kilobyte. The network broadcast delay of 2 KB size is 50 milliseconds. However, the broadcast delay of the 4 KB size is 100 milliseconds. The NRI only supports a 4 KB net package size. Therefore, choose the 4 KB net package size when using the above devices, or some of the audio will not be broadcasted normally. On the other hand, the 2 KB net package size is better for the DCS3000 and the NPMS. We will now add the groups and devices. After setting the parameters of the project, the first group is displayed in the window. If more than one group is needed, right-click the project name and click Add to add the new groups. Enter a group name and set it as the central group as required. Click OK and add it into the project. After creating a group, we need to address the devices in this group one by one. Right-click a group 
and click Add to add the device. A dialog box will pop up. We can choose the type of device such as the DCS3000, the NPMS, the NRI, and set the device name to what we prefer. For an example, here we can add DCS3000, XNRI, or the NPMS. All the, dis all the devices will be displayed under this group. Right-click the device name. You can now add, copy, paste, rename, or delete the device. The copy and paste function can create a copy device which has the same settings as the original. This way, we won't need to repeatedly set the same parameters for the same type of devices. We now have the DCS3000 device settings. According to the configuration guidelines, we start with DCS device setting first. Click DCS in the devices list and a window will pop up including properties, modules, amplifier, time, supervision, and automatic volume control. We can set the parameters one by one. Now we can set the properties. Basic settings include device ID, device name, device type, and emergency button. Device ID is the only device identification in the system, which has a range from 1 to 999. The emergency button option is to enable or disable the emergency button on the DCS3000. Enable buzzer is used to enable a built-in buzzer inside the DCS. If we enable it, the DCS will generate a buzz when there is a fault in the system. The fire alarm interface should be set to disabled. The network setting is used to set the DCS network parameter. For updating the network parameters of the system devices, it should be connected to a computer whose IP address is set to the same IP address as the DCS. Click the update button for setting the IP address of the DCS. The two IP addresses will be the same. The default IP address is 192 dot one six eight dot two dot two hundred. If you do not know the IP address of a certain DCS, you can find it on the front panel of the DCS. Press all and monitor buttons in order and release them in reverse. The DCS will recognize the present IP address. The zone list setting allows users to enable or disable the zones and add the description of the zone name and power. Select the checkbox to enable the corresponding zone. Click the zone name or the power to edit it. The power setting value is only used to determine if the amplifiers are appropriate. The emergency volume of each loudspeaker line can be set and the ranges are from negative 10 decibel to zero decibel. The audio input setting is used to set the parameter of the auxiliary input audio such as enable or disable input, multicast IP, description and input sensitivity. Each row represents one audio channel. After initiating, it will assign a multicast IP address for each audio channel automatically. The audio signal will be broadcast to the network. Users can change the multicast IP address according to the requirements. The, the default address is recommended. Audio information can be entered into the description column. Auxiliary inputs 2 and 3 are the balance input interface of the XLR, the X latching resi the resilient rubber compound. Users can set the balance or non-balance signal. The input sensitivity can be adjusted from negative 40 decibel to negative 0 decibel. About the audio format, we usually select ADPCM, the Adapted Differential Pulse Code Modulation, instead of the PCM, the Pulse Code Modulation. Storage is usually set to storage location for the audio files, including the 600 megabyte flash memory or a 4 GB SD card. Usually, an SD card is recommended. The module setting is set to the external modules on the DCL buses, 
such as noise detector or EOL for end of line module. The ports should be matched to the DCL ports on the rear panel of the DCS 3000. The module types need to be set according to the actual address of every input channel. Amplifiers are used to set the parameters of backup amplifiers. Backup mode includes disabled, single mode, and double mode. Disabled means there is no backup amplifier in the system. Single mode means one amplifier channel is connected with the spare one port and it can back up all the main amplifiers. Double mode means two backup amplifier channels are connected. The first channel can be used to back up channels 1, 3, 5, and channel 7. The second one can be used to back up channels 2, 4, 6, and 8. The main amplifier setting is to choose the amplifier type for each channel according to how it is set up in the system. We can also set the backup and recovery for the main amplifiers. In the backup, we can select the channel that we want to have backed up. Recovery means the channel could switch between the main amplifier and the backup amplifier. What needs to be emphasized is that if the amplifier supervision should be enabled, otherwise the backup function will not work normally. Time setting is used to set the parameters of synchronization, time zone, date, and time. Synchronization mode is used to set the parameters of time synchronization for DCS through the NTP protocol. If the NTP server is enabled, the DCS will work as a time server. All devices synchronize with the time on the DCS. NTP client is enabled. The DCS will automatically synchronize the time via time server. The server IP address and synchronization period needed will be set. We can also select a specific time of synchronization instead of setting the synchronization period. Time zone setting is used to set the internal time zone of the DCS 3000. Enter the time zone of the current location and click the Update button to change the time zone. If All Devices is selected, clicking Update will change the time zone of all devices. If the device time zone is different from the local time zone, the time and date will not synchronize. Time and date setting is used to view and manually update the device's date and time. Click the Get button to read the device's date and time. If only the update button is clicked, the time and date of the current DCS will be changed. If all devices and update are both selected, the time and date of all devices, such as the DCS 3000, the NPMS, and the NRI will be changed. Supervision is used to set the parameters of the supervision functions. In Supervision Options, we can choose to enable or disable the fault supervision for the AC power, DC power, communication, and speaker line. The second part is line supervision settings. If line impedance is enabled, users can respectively enable or disable the line supervision function of the enabled speaker lines and set the line tolerance parameters. When the line impedance is lower than the lower limit, a short circuit will be found in the speaker line. When the impedance is higher than the upper limit, an open circuit will be found in the speaker line. The recommendation is monitoring type for the line impedance. If using end-of-line modules, EOL monitoring should also be selected. In module supervision, the modules connected with the EOL or the digital noise detector ND100 can be supervised. Line check interval time is used to set the measurement period of a speaker line impedance. The value ranges from 10 to the 1800s. Amplifier supervision is used to supervise the device fault and the loop fault of the amplifier. If it is needed, a device fault will indicate a fault in the amplifier, such as the power fault or protection circuit fault.